Happy New Year, church. This is the first Sunday of 2021, Sunday, January 3rd. We'll be celebrating communion today, so if you haven't already, gather around something to eat and something to drink as we celebrate the Lord's communion with us. Just a couple of announcements before we begin. Uh, if you'd like to get on the church's mailing list, please contact the office or me, and we can keep you up to date on the latest goings on here in our ministry. Our website is www.fpcmatoon.org. There are resources there for online giving, uh, for our Facebook page, YouTube channels, all that. Now let's prepare our hearts for worship as we hear the prelude that Scott Hines has prepared for us. Friends, please join me in our responsive call to worship. Behold, the light of Christ is shining. Let us seek out the Lord and worship the King.
If we say we are sinless, we are liars and strangers to the truth. But if we confess our sins, God is eager to restore us in humility and in trust. Let us be honest before our Lord. God, we can be callous and careless when it comes to the needs of our neighbors. We are quick to speak when we should listen first. We underestimate your grace for all people, and we keep score when we should so love generously. Help us to be both wise and good in the strength of your spirit. Please take a moment of silence to confess your personal sins to God. Hear the good news. The old life is Hear the good news. The old life is gone. A new life begins. The scriptures remind us that all who call on the Lord and believe in his name shall be saved. Therefore, with confidence, I declare to you in the name of Christ that your sins are forgiven. Be at peace and give all thanks to God. Please join me as together we affirm our faith, saying the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. What a gift we the church have in the words of God given to us, inspired by the Holy Spirit. And so as we read the scriptures today, let's first invite the Holy Spirit to open up our hearts and minds so that we can receive with understanding and with encouragement God's word. God, what a privilege to hear the words that you have for us today. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable to you. For God, you are our strength, our rock, and our redeemer. Amen. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, Paul says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come, the old has gone, and the new is here. What's up, FPC Youth and Congregation? It is me, Mr. Toby, coming to you live in the sanctuary. And this, the first Sunday of 2021. I can't believe that it is 2021. This is my 40th trip around the sun starting this year. So yeah, my birthday this year, I turned 40 over the hill. Unbelievable. But... When I think of New Year's, I think of a New Year's resolution. Do you know what a resolution is? A resolution is something that we do at the beginning of the year to sometimes better ourselves or to do good things for other people. So what I noticed is, is that Mr. Toby is way out of shape and I have hired my own personal trainer. Let's go.
on, let's go, let's go. If you saw what I just did, boy, am I tired. But I'm going to be better and more fit this year. But that's not just the only thing you can do for New Year's. You can do some things for God for New Year's to make you a new Christian. Let's check it out. Thank you. Cody, can I pray with you? Yeah, sit down. Let's pray. So, what Zach and I just did is we're, I showed you what I am going to do for this upcoming new year. I, I read scripture a lot, but I need to read scripture every single day. So I'm going to try to make it a habit of doing it every day. Not only that, but I want to be able to pray every day. Sometimes I pray, but it's not all the time, and I should do it more often for people that I know and for people that I don't know. So what I want you to do is to come up with something that you can do that God would love for you to do, okay? And I want you to let me know exactly what you're doing for 2021. And all God's children said, amen. Today's Old Testament reading is from the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 31 of his book, verses 7 through 14. For thus says the Lord, Sing aloud with gladness for Jacob, and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise, and say, Save, O Lord, your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I am going to bring them from the land of the north, and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth, among them the blind and the lame, those with child and those in labor together, a great company. They shall return here. With weeping they shall come, and with consolations I will lead them back. I will let them walk by brooks of water in a straight path in which they shall not stumble. For I have become a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations, and declare it in the coastlands far away. Say, he who scattered Israel will gather them and will keep him as a shepherd a flock. For the Lord has ransomed Jacob and has redeemed him from hands too strong for him. They shall come and sing aloud on the height of Zion, and they shall be radiant over the goodness of the Lord over the grain, the wine, and the oil, and over the young of the flock and the herd, their life shall become like a watered garden, and they shall never languish again. Then shall the young women rejoice in the dance, and the young men and the old shall be merry. I will turn their mourning into joy. I will comfort them and give them gladness for sorrow. I will give the priests their fill of fatness, and my people shall be satisfied with my bounty, says the Lord. And the New Testament reading for today from Paul's letter to the Ephesian church, Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 to 14. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. In him, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ, as a plan for the fullness of time, to gather up all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In Christ, we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things, according to his counsel and will, so that we who were the first to set our hope on Christ might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit, 
This is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption as God's own people to the praise of his glory. As a very fortunate person with two loving parents, I know nothing from experience about what life is like for an orphan. And while I have a number of friends who have adopted children, I am not intimately acquainted with the experience of adopting a child or being adopted. What I know is limited based on the testimonies of others. Today's scriptures make me wonder about the experience of adoption. And after a moment's reflection, I'm convinced that I have taken so much for granted. I haven't thought enough about how I personally or we as a church can advocate for children who don't have a stable home life. For a time, my maternal grandfather helped out as a court-appointed special advocate to find a stable home for children in need. There are social workers and other good people in our community and around this world doing their best to help. But it must take a great deal of strength and endurance to work in the midst of such discouragement and despair. I have a friend in the Quad Cities who did that work for a time. The heartache was immense. If you stop and think for a moment about the number of children here in Mattoon who right now are feeling unwanted or neglected, then you will find yourself praying and thinking about what we can do. Already, there is a backpack program and schools and charities are doing the work of distributing food and trying to help. What else might we do? Guided by the scripture, I'm thinking about such children and indeed about all souls who are claimed by God as children. What do souls truly need even beyond the basic provisions for survival. What would be the very best news that an orphan or a neglected soul could get? That there's food on the table? Or something even more than that? Without a doubt, every person on this planet needs to know that they are wanted, that they are loved, that they're not a mistake, that they have value and are deeply cherished by another. Without that, every human soul is vulnerable to despair. From the beginning, the church has been committed to caring for the orphans and the widows of the world, the most vulnerable, the most likely to be overlooked, the least likely to be cared for. That's who Jesus sought out in his ministry as well. And it's the very reason that the church established the ministry of deacons to care for the widow, to care for the orphan. Compelled by the radical love of Jesus Christ for the overlooked and the forgotten, the church went to work right away with empathy and with joy and gratitude to address the loneliness with the good news and love of God. Gratitude for God's love, but great compassion for those in need. It compelled the church then and now. Everyone, everyone needs to hear the good news of God's love. In our reading today from the prophet Jeremiah, you hear the prophet's hope in the face of incredible despair. They were going through hard times as a people. Jeremiah gave these words during a time when God's people felt like orphans. The Israelites had been torn from their home with no place to call their own. Where did they belong? Did God, did God care for them? Who would care for them? Jeremiah preached boldly that the nation must once again put their trust in the God who had delivered them in the past and whom they believed would once again save them, who made promises to restore. Remember me is the cry of those who feel forsaken. Remember me is carved or rather embroidered on the tapestry there on our communion table, right here in the center of our sanctuary. The prophet Jeremiah, inspired by the very Spirit of God, and in the midst of his own suffering and his people suffering, prophesied of a time when singing would replace weeping. The tears on their cheeks would be of joy rather than lamentation. The hope of adoption is clear and present in today's reading from Jeremiah. 
Listen again to what God said. I have become a father to Israel. That's the language of adoption. And in his letter to the early church in the city of Ephesus, Paul's message is infused with the joy and enthusiasm of an orphan who has just received the best news imaginable and who is sharing that message with his siblings. All of our hopes and dreams, impossible as they, so they sounded, have come true. We have been adopted. That is the essence of Paul's message. God has always promised that he would claim us, that he would redeem us, and in Jesus Christ, that's exactly what God has done. To put it another way, once upon a time, we were desperate for a place where we belonged. Uncertain if we could truly be loved, lowly and, and dirty and messy as we were. We were unsure of our worth and our value. Once we wondered if we could truly be loved, adopted and brought home. Once we didn't know if we were wanted but now, because we have been given the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus, we see that God has spared no expense to claim us. It cost God everything. And God considered us worthy even when we were miserable and broken. Adoption in reality and in the scriptural metaphors is so absolutely beautiful. I've been reminded this week that unless the church is finding her joy and sharing the good news of God's love for the lost and being practical and making that known through acts of service as well as our testimony, then we're forgetting what makes the message of Jesus so amazing. This message is grace, pure and simple. But not only does the gospel joyfully deliver the news of being wanted, with it comes great blessings for the present and an inheritance in the future. All of our deepest wishes come true in Christ. There is a deeper matter than mere worldly provisions in a warm home, though those things are needed. This has to do with our very being and our purpose. Every soul needs to hear this message. Take time to bask in the Christmas joy daily don't leave the implications of Christmas unwrapped and sitting under the tree. The shepherds aren't to be the only ones that sing about this good news. Hear it again. God has always wanted you. For anyone willing to trust Jesus, there is complete forgiveness and new life in restored relationship with God. Even if you don't have earthly parents or don't know your earthly parents, you can have an inheritance and a destiny. What proof has the church to offer? We have Christ's life and the testimony of those who have been saved by grace. What proof has the church to offer? The very spirit that was in Christ is within the believer's heart. Are you resonating with this message? Do you want to believe? That's the Holy Spirit. Paul said, we have been marked with the seal of the Holy Spirit. That's the guarantee of these things, this inheritance to come. I mentioned that I was reminded this week about the joy of sharing the good news of God's love for the lost. On Tuesday, as I met with a pastor from Monticello who has a heart for sharing the message of Jesus with teens, that Holy Spirit was blazing within my heart. I was reminded of the reason that I went into ministry when I first received the good news of God's love for me and that motivated me into ministry. I wanted to be a part of sharing God's message of hope with a world so desperately in need of grace and mercy. I just wanted to make that love of God known because I had felt it and it changed me. So I ask again, what is the very best news that a person can get? Is it that her interview was successful and she got the dream job? That she's won the lottery? Even the best job cannot perfectly grant a sense of wholeness and peace. And money, as useful as it can be, it tends to add new problems rather than solve the most important ones. Only in a relationship with Jesus Christ shall we find authentic rest for our souls and power for holy, redeemed living.
We shall be rescued from the prison of selfishness and free to be generous, humble, full of love and grace to share as Christ has shared with us. No, it's not enough to simply tell somebody about Jesus. They need food, clothing, shelter, and friendship as well. But Jesus answers our questions of why. Why bother? Or the question, am I cherished? Jesus answers those questions with, yes, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I'm here for you. This is foundational to life and salvation for our souls. From the corners of the world where we have been scattered like those Israelites of old, the family of God is being gathered under the banner of Jesus Christ. The lost are being found. The orphans are discovering an inheritance and a destiny. Come to the table and let's share the family meal. Amen. Church, our Lord Jesus Christ is inviting us to take a rest, to enjoy this meal in the spirit of Christ and spiritually with our brothers and sisters. This is not just for Presbyterians, but this is a meal for all who believe that Jesus is the Christ. So at your homes, wherever you're watching this, we encourage you to gather together the elements that God might bless these common elements to sacred use. Jesus says, come, sit with me. Take this meal with me. I want to give you some rest. Let's pray. Holy God, in this symbolic meal, we remember that you are truly present with us, feeding our bodies, our minds, and our spirits. We are so grateful that we can come together at this table and remember you and know that we are loved. In the beginning, Lord, you created everything, seen and unseen with a word. And when we turned from you, people made in your very image, when we turned our backs on you, you did not leave us to our own devices. You did not mark us as lost, but you came to rescue and redeem us. We thank you for the work of Jesus Christ on the cross, for your Holy Spirit, for this time to celebrate and remember and receive. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I share with you that which has been passed down by the church through the ages, that on the night our Lord Jesus Christ would be betrayed by his friends. He took bread, and after giving thanks to God, he broke it, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, broken for you. Every time you eat this, remember me. And in the same way, our Lord took the cup and he said, with this cup, I make a new covenant, the forgiveness of sins through the shedding of my blood. Every time you drink this, remember me. For as often as we take this bread and drink this cup, we remember our Lord's death until he comes again. At this time, I invite you to take the bread. This is the bread of heaven. Christ's body broken for us. And Jesus, Jesus Christ took the cup and he said, drink this, all of you.
Holy God, you meet us where we are. You give us yourself. You have showed us the extent of your love. But we have no idea how much we are truly valued. May we, in the spirit and example of Christ, learn to give of ourselves for the good of others. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, church. Church, the Lord loves a cheerful giver. As you are able, from your time, your talents, and the resources available to you, consider how you might use what God has given to the glory of God and for the good of others. Let us pray. Lord, receive the gifts we return to you as an act of grateful worship. May what we give testify to your generosity and be of real help to our neighbors. You are worthy of our best, and it is our privilege to contribute to Christ's ministry. Amen. Let us pray. For this new year, holy God, we pray for a fresh wind, a movement of your Holy Spirit, for your breath to fill us, that we might be encouraged with the good news of Jesus Christ given in Christmas and empowered to make things right for others, to share your message through actions and words of love. We pray for the hurting. This has been a hard season, Lord, for all people. But we thank you for the ways that you have brought us through, the things that we have learned. We love you, Lord, and we pray now as you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Having spent time in worship, we go forward now into our places of ministry as ambassadors of God's grace, empowered by the very love of Jesus. Receive now the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you.